Hello everyone, welcome to day 54 of my Yusuko log. And uh, first I'll address where I've been for the last three days, because I don't think I've done uh, anything on YouTube. So basically, uh, I've been trying to get my application in for the summer programs that I'm applying to. So that takes a lot of time, and also writing my self-introductions uh, and other types of essays did take up uh, a lot of time. So uh, I didn't really have enough left over to actually do Yusuko logs, although I mean I guess I could pull one of those like 10 p.m. uploads, except I did have to go to school for the last two days. And I do have to wake up quite early, so I don't want to stay up all night uh, doing stuff. Alright, so now that I've addressed that, um, I also have a lot of other homework for my school classes, like English and History. It's about time that those projects are actually due, <coughs> but um, the English teacher is quite flexible. So, uh, that's very nice. But History Project is like uh, part of the competition. It's National History Day. And I'm, I am doing a uh, website project. So, I have to design my own web page. I'm not sure about the structure, uh, the unique elements, and the content. I mean, I have a lot of notes on a lot of uh, primary and secondary sources. Uh, but... I'm not sure about exactly how I'd, I would go about putting that together and how I'd, I would make my project stand out from other ones. But first I think I want to put the bulk of the information onto the page. Or at least the type of information I want to put on the page. And how I'll represent it. Like images or text and where should I put the text with respect to the other text. <coughs> so, uh, yeah that is very tedious. Also the um, the actual software or like web page, web app that uh, National History Day allows for you to <coughs> actually make your website is extremely dated but it does allow for some customization with custom CSS <coughs> which is allowed so, I think I can... I'm not going to utilize it. Uh, there's no point. Um, I think everything is customizable just from those um, very annoying menus. Alright, so... <clears throat> I logged on to usico.guide. My voice is kind of failing. I think it's because... I was uh, playing League just now, and uh, our school team, we're trying to train the B team right now, so like the younger generation of players, uh, so that they can actually replace the seniors when they go to college next year, or I mean this autumn. Alright, so there was a lot of work to do there, I was the one taking notes on their scrim against uh, a neighboring town's team. And they got uh, beat in both games, but the second game we saw big improvements, <coughs> and they were actually on track to win. But unfortunately they threw it away at the end there by not having the proper uh, the proper lane assignments for each person. So that was unfortunate. But now let's go back to usago.guide. So I logged on and I went to the silver section and I realized that the prefix sum part is actually ahead of the sorting and searching section, which implies that the makers of the guide actually think prefix sums are more important, <coughs> or at least you have to understand them before going into sorting and searching. Uh, so, the problems I did um, 
So like the order I did them in was I did sorting first, then I did like TFS, and then I did prefix sums, then I did flood fill. So or I, I did binary search somewhere in between uh, earlier. But now I'm trying to do this prefix sum problem, subarray sums two from the CSES sorting and searching problem set. So this problem is normal difficulty. And uh, <clears throat> the basic idea is you have n numbers. And then uh, for all of these subarrays, figure out how many of the subarrays have a sum of x, and x is given in the beginning. So basically, uh, they want you to use a prefix sum method, not a two pointers method. And I did do two pointers at the uh, at the kind of time closer to the present. So anyway, continuing uh, for prefix sums, the idea is basically you have um, basically just bunch of sums for uh, what you say for every actual unit or every element in your array um, there should be another array that's kind of in parallel and that array contains the sum of uh, the current index uh, so for example the prefix sum of 1, 2, 3 at the index 3 would be 6 because that's 1 plus 2 plus 3. Or I mean, that would be the index 2. But um, you get what I mean because there's three things. There's the elements in that array. Alright, so anyway, this problem's idea is basically uh, you have to use a map where uh, you map a actual prefix sum to however many of that sum there are. So you do that here. And of course, here uh, we got the input. So val is the vector that stores all of the n numbers. Um, and then answer is going to be the thing that we return. And p sum or partial sum is going to be uh, the value that maintains the sum of every single um, of every single uh, partial sum. Wait, no, no, no. At every index for every element in the array. So for sums, uh, we know that we want to um, add to the answer when. Uh, when the sum, the partial sum at whatever index is equal to zero or is equal to x. So basically, uh, what we want to do is set sum zero equal to one because then when we do this answer plus equals to, then the partial sum minus x will be zero and then that'll be a value of one. So that is the basic idea. Uh, also, we just loop through all of the values and we add to the partial sum. And if answer, or I mean, if, uh, wait, okay, so if there is a partial sum uh, that is or if the difference between the partial sum and x is ever uh, equal to a previous value of the partial sum, then uh, basically we'll add the whatever number there are. So it could be 0 to any number. So if, uh, in the first case where we actually add to answer, it'll be plus equals 1. I'm pretty sure. Uh, yeah. Because you already have one copy of that partial sum, and then when you reach another number that actually has a difference 
or another partial sum that has a difference between it and x of that previous partial sum will add to the answer by 1. And of course, at the end of this loop here, we want to uh, increment the uh, whatever partial sum we have right now, that index or that mapping of uh, the sums map by 1. So like let's say we had a partial sum of 8 then sums 8 would be added to by 1. So we would increment, increment that by 1. And then the next time that uh, the partial sum minus x is equal to that number it means we can now exclude some amount of values to actually get to the x, x value. Let's see if that makes sense. So basically, let's see. So we had 13 as our partial sum, and then we had 5 <coughs> as some of the previous values partial sum, and then that would be loaded in. And so if x is equal to 8, then that means if we ever subtract 13 by 8 and it equals 5, then basically it means we've found a value where we can exclude some number to get to that previous sum which is then equal to x. Yeah, that would make sense. Okay, then we output the answer. So basically uh, think this over. If it doesn't make sense then uh, keep thinking about it I guess. Uh, it's not completely clear to me either. So I'm also thinking about it. Mm. So the basic idea is if the current partial sum minus x is ever equal to a previous value, then that means the previous uh, partial sum can be excluded from the current total uh, fr from like 0 to n or whatever, uh, whatever you want to call the counter, from 0 to k I guess. Um, then basically that can be excluded out and there will be some uh, there will be some chain uh, or subarray in which uh, the actual sum is going to be x and that's determined by however many previous sums uh, previous partial sums are equal to uh, that value of the current partial sum minus x so within sums, you do have to map how many times uh, each value appears before. So uh, yeah, that's what it for this video. Thank you guys for watching. And wait, I don't want to say anything. Uh, yeah, so this is going to be a busy weekend. Don't expect too many uploads. I mean, I will do the daily Yuzuko log. But I have to uh, try to do my other work first. And another thing, I know the February contest is this weekend, but I'm not going to participate because I really have not prepared well enough, obviously because um, I haven't done the hard problems for any of the sections, I would say, to a good degree of success, except for DFS, which I find incredibly intuitive. Even those I can't do uh, to a good level of mastery. So uh, I will be uh, saving up my knowledge and trying to learn at a pace where I can participate in the open.
of this year, which I don't know when that actually is. Um, I think it's like the summer, probably. I'll have to check. Maybe April. But I do think I'll have enough time uh, by then. Or enough practice. So yeah, thank you guys for watching. And see you guys next time.